Whether you're just starting out brewing or looking to upgrade, there's a lot to consider when picking the perfect fermenter. Today I'm going to break it all down for you so you can make the right choice for your home brewery. I'm Trent Musho and this is The Brew Show. Let's talk fermenters. The fermentation process is one of the most important parts of brewing. Without fermentation, we'd have no beer, wine, cider, or many other delicious beverages. So having the right fermenter can make all the difference in making the best drink possible. But sometimes choosing from the many varieties and brands can be a bit of a headache. Which material is best? Which shape is the right choice? Do I need to spend hundreds of dollars? Or can I just spend a few bucks? The answer may be different for each brewer. But hopefully by the end of this video, you can get a better understanding of the types of fermenters and you can make a more informed decision on the one for you. If you enjoy simple home brewing tips and breakdowns like this one, hit the like button and subscribe for more home brewing videos like this. Now let's get into it. The first place to start is with the material that the fermenter is made with. The three most common types are glass, plastic, and stainless steel. Glass is the go-to for many beginner brewers because it's often sold in part of home brewing kits, especially for winemaking kits, which is where my first foray into brewing was. The best part about glass is that it's impermeable to oxygen, meaning that it's perfect for long-term storage and oxygen-sensitive brews since the glass does not breathe. Glass is also super easy to clean. You never have to worry about scratches that can harbor bacteria and infect your fermentations. However, glass is highly and easily breakable. Seriously, one bump or nick can send glass shards everywhere and gallons on gallons of beer all over the place. Glass can also be heavy if you have thicker carboys and when you have them filled with liquid, they become extremely cumbersome to carry around. Lastly, depending on the color of glass, you can have issues with light exposure. Clear glass will let you see what's going on, but light touching your beer can cause your beer to skunk and ruin the whole batch. Plastic is also very common with new brewers for the same reason as glass. They're also sold with kits alongside a glass carboy. But additionally, plastic is inexpensive and fairly durable. You can be much less worried about breaking a plastic fermenter compared to glass, but that doesn't mean they're indestructible. Plastic easily scratches and gouges that can cause areas to collect bacteria that could potentially infect your ferment. So it's best not to use abrasive or metal tools with plastic. Plastic can come in many forms and colors. There are clear ones which allow you to see the brew ferment but also have to stay out of sunlight. And there are more opaque ones that you can't see, but you don't have to worry so much about skunking your beer. There are also many types of plastics, but in general, make sure you're using food safe plastics that are meant for reuse. Some plastics out there are single use, like water bottles. So double check that. Most mass produced fermenters are good to go. Lastly, stainless steel is what most people see as the gold standard for fermenters because breweries around the world use them to create beer every day. Stainless steel ideally should last you a lifetime if taken care of properly, but it comes with a higher price tag. They are nearly scratch resistant and can handle hot wort going in them better than plastic that might melt. Stainless steel is also extremely easy to clean. They often come with various outputs and accessories that can give you more flexibility and upgradability but can increase your overall cost. Another downside besides price is that you can't really see what's going on inside the fermenter. But if you're confident in your brewing, you just have to trust the process. Another option that isn't as common on the home brewing scale is wood, as in a wood barrel. There are some new options out there, but generally wood is meant for more long-term storage and aging. Now that we know what fermenters can be made of, let's talk about how they can be shaped and why that might matter. The most common forms that you might see are buckets, carboys, and conicals. Buckets are the home brewer's best friend. They're tried and true, and brewers have been using buckets in some way for decades. Buckets are simple and easy to move around, Usually they have some sort of handle. Some buckets have spigots and some don't. So you might need an auto siphon to get your beer out of the bucket. But they come in all sizes for whatever size batch you're looking to ferment. The most common is the plastic bucket since they're extremely inexpensive. If you're in need for a new bucket fermenter, check out my DIY bucket build to learn how to make one for just under $10. It's super easy and they're great to have on hand for experimental brews. Plastic buckets can also have other uses in the brewery once their life as a fermenter has passed. Nowadays, they have stainless steel bucket fermenters if you're looking for a little upgrade and want something that can last for much longer. The typical carboy is usually made with glass and has a narrow opening, 
These glass carboys have also been used to homebrew for a long time. I remember my uncle showing me his homemade wine in the basement, and seeing the glass carboys with aging wine lined up sure was a pretty thing to see. Glass carboys are perfect for that very thing, aging wine or other drinks that need a little more time to mellow up. But their narrow opening makes it a pain in the to clean. Also glass carboys do not have any spigot, so an auto siphon is required. Luckily in the last 20 years there have been great improvements in plastic carboys that have much wider mouths that can allow you to put your arm in and do a deep clean. Plastic carboys also have the potential for a spigot for simple transfers. Either way, carboys are not the easiest thing to lift or hold onto. Their smooth sides can make it risky, especially when filled with liquid. But most carboys have straps you can buy to make it easier. Conicals are all the rage these days, probably because breweries utilize a conical for fermenting to encourage the yeast to drop out. The conical shape allows the yeast to slide down towards a point where there's either a spout that the brewer can collect the yeast or rack the beer off without getting any yeast slush. Some homebrewing conicals even have a collection ball on the bottom for the yeast to fall into so you can remove it, reducing the overall amount of flocculated yeast. Those collection balls can also double as a place to dry hop from, as long as you can ensure it's an oxygen-free space. Conicals are usually seen in plastic form and stainless steel, and because of their shape, they usually come with a stand or have legs. So unless you have some sort of glycol chilling system, these conicals are usually too big to fit in a temp-controlled fridge or ice bath. There are some other unique shapes out there as well, like all-rounders, eggs, and even cylinders. I hope to play around with different form fermenters in the future. If you have a unique shape fermenter that I didn't mention here, let me know in the comments. Quickly, I want to cover pressure fermentation, as it has grown in popularity in recent years. Pressure fermenting is when your vessel can hold pressure while active fermentation is going on. Some of the benefits of this are minimized risk of oxidation, quicker fermentations, and increased hop character. Some people have also been fermenting lager yeast under pressure at higher temps with great success. Pressure fermenters come in conicals, rounder shapes, and in plastic and stainless. Some are on the lower cost range and some are more expensive. But one of the cheapest ways to make a pressure fermenter is to convert a keg to ferment it. There are some accessories that in my opinion can make or break your purchase. Here are some things that I look for. Spigots. Can I easily transfer out of the fermenter or am I going to need a bunch of equipment every time? Handles. How am I going to move this thing around? Thermal wells. Is there a way to monitor temperature so I can ensure my brew is not getting too hot and creating off flavors? Temp control. Can I fit this in a fermenter chamber or ice bucket or am I going to need to buy additional equipment to keep things cool? I'm curious to know, what's the one thing that you need in a fermenter? Let me know in the comments. Alright, so we've gone over what to consider, but what do I think is the best option? Well, if money is no problem, a stainless conical will surely make your brewery look professional. And you'll have the satisfaction of knowing you won't need to get another fermenter again. Well, at least until the next generation comes out. If you're looking for something that you don't need to take a loan out on, then a stainless bucket seems to be a good investment. But if you're more frugal like myself, then I say go for a plastic carboy. They're durable and you'll get plenty of great beverages to enjoy out of them. And by the end of its life, maybe you'll be ready to upgrade. If you're just getting started, then DIY yourself a bucket and get to brewing. There's no point in spending a lot of money at the start while there's still plenty of other areas of brewing that you should improve on first. Several of my fellow YouTubers have done extensive tests and trials on many of these fermenters, and I recommend you check them out if you need more details. But if there's any fermenter you would love to see me do a deep dive on, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. And while you're here, why not check out one of my other videos?